Hello, everybody and everything. This is another video of a square vacuum cleaner. I'm sorry, I know somebody complained about this the other day. I presume it was tongue in cheek. If not, that's how I took it. If you were looking for a rise, tough sight, really. Because I just laughed. Because it is a square box. It is a Hoover Turbo Power. What else? Now, this is the main reason I dived off of the comfort of the M6 on the way back from Canic yesterday. Went through horrible roads, random one-way systems, into Birmingham to go and see Tayab because we swapped this. He bought, he'd never had a turbo power before and it was very local to him, up the road I think. So he bought it and has had it for a few weeks and has used it and I think has grown quite fond of it. His first turbo power, it is a beauty as well because this is a very rare one. But he partly got it because I said, oh, oh, I'll have that off you at some point when you're bored of it. And that's what happened. I swapped the Maytag wind tunnel for it. So I now no longer have the Maytag wind tunnel. However, I'm sure we shall see it again on his channel. I'm not too fussed to be honest, I'd much rather have this. I do like my turbo powers, as I'm sure some of you have noticed. And I also took some other machines. You've got the broken DC-50, the broken DC-24 as well for them to play with. I probably should have given them some more, but I don't really have a lot of vacuum cleaners at the moment that I want to get rid of. Or that I'm ready to get rid of. So here we go. Some of you might have seen this on eBay when it was there. I think it was about 30 quid. It's probably about how much the wind tunnel cost you by the time I paid it and driven to Watford and back. Probably a bit less, but all the rest. So, we have a U2196 from, if I, I don't know how close, let me take you out the tripod. There we go. Roger, if you're watching, this is how you date these sort of cereals. Because Roger would never do this. U2196, so that is the model number. That will be the model number. Then, the next one is the year. So, 5, 1985. You have to know the decade, or have a good guess at least, at the decade. Obviously, it's not going to be 1995, because they had a completely different range of turbo power out then. It's not going to be 1975, because turbo power wasn't made then. Then the next one is the month, so 01, January, and it's number 528. That's how you date. This serial number ran, this style of rating sticker ran from the early 70s, I think, right the way through to just about the 2000s. And there is a way of dating the candy era stuff, but I haven't got one in front of me to describe it to you. So that is how you date it. U2196, January 1985. Number 528. And here endeth the lesson. Look at it. It is spotless. I won't be able to get it much better than that. There's probably a few little marks that will polish out. That hazy will go. But it's immaculate. It really is good. That's probably the worst damage there is to the whole flipping thing. I'm well chuffed with it. Very chuffed indeed. And sorry, I'll keep you in handheld mode. So you may as well flip it over while we're here and have a look at the underneath. Now I think it's had a replacement brush roll at some point, which doesn't surprise me, being for 1985, but it is nice and stiff and nice and long. So happy with that. I'd rather have it like that than completely worn flat and I need to replace it anyway. It's a bit grubby. It's obviously not been used too much recently, but it's all right. There's a little bit of damage to the wheel, sadly, that I do need to strengthen up. But I've had a lot worse. Probably turbo power wheels. They are so fragile. If you're ever thinking, of, if you're watching this, could you've got one to sell? If you're just a collector, if you're looking at collecting turbo powers, for God's sake. There we go. Look, that's, there's that piece of plastic. That's good, actually. Because I can glue that back in possibly put it in the top of my toolbox turbo power wheels are the most fragile things about and you cannot get them i keep meaning to look at 3d printing them if anybody watching my videos and knows anything about 3d printing do you reckon these can be made 
strong enough to support the weight of a machine. Because if you post these, and I'll do it with this one, you just take the wheel, for God's sake, take the wheels off. And you do that by popping these little latches out. One, two, three. And just keep going round. There we go. And eventually, the centre cap will fall off. Then, and this is only on the, uh, the very later ones, you can't do this with, but that's literally the, the very last ones. And I won't do it, but you push that circlip off, lift the washer up, lift the wheel off, and then put the washer and the circlip back on the axle stub. Then you post it. Otherwise, and I, I, well, as you've seen from my videos, my... In fact, it is this colour scheme, and I'm flipping packed it away now, so I can't do a nice comparison video in real life. But my U1220, that's how its wheels got smashed. It wasn't protected properly. Damn, I can't do a comparison video now. Never mind. Right, let's pop you back in my little tripod. Diddly, diddly do. There we go. And we'll have a look around the rest of the machine quickly. So, bag door open. Oh, yeah, there are the bags for the Hitachi. Very good there. For some reason, somebody decided to put the model number there as well. Hopefully that will come off. There's the stickerette. And it's a non-genuine bag, but it's clean enough. It is a bag slide. But I've got some of those. And of course, you probably all realise now, but look, it's got Autoflex. Good old Autoflex. It's also, look, electricity board. Special for the Hoover plug. Hoover. Let's pull the, it, it does seem to be pulling the cord in a little bit. I'm not quite sure what its problem is. I imagine that there'll be some scrap on the... There should be, deep in there, yes, look, you, you probably can't... You can just see this. See that little white peg? That is what should be sprung hard against the cables. When you pull the cable out, it pulls that plastic peg out. Then when you let go, that plastic peg goes against the cable. And I've got an auto flex unit it's in the shed. So I'm not too fussed if that is broken because I can just rob one off of that. If I just point you away from the back door, so you can actually see, there we go. I'll see if I can get it out. Now, there we go. Fortunately, there is a little bit of damage to the cable. So I'm going to take the unit apart and rewire. So you chop it off to probably there and rewire that bit in, because obviously that's a bit of a shame. If I just, it's been to the car overnight, I didn't bring it in yesterday, I, I, I got home at tea time in the end, I left Tayabs at about half past four, and got home at six. Nice 70 mile an hour waft down the road. So, here we go. And it works, actually. This is one of the better auto... It's, it's only struggling because look, the cable's all coiled up. It's actually, I think, one of the better auto flex rewinds I've had. Because you're supposed to help them in a bit. They're not like these modern affairs. And obviously with a cylinder, I bet you if I laid that down a bit... Yeah, it takes it a lot easier because it hasn't got to pull the weight of the cable. So, we'll put it all out again. Oh, I've just bashed the light. Whoopsie. Oh, that'll do it. And it sounds absolutely superb. We were using it yesterday. It really does sound mint. I won't have to do much to it at all, I don't think. Have a listen. You've heard my refurbished ones. Can you tell the difference? It's perfectly fine. Ever so slightly brightened up the ruined bit of carpet where Amy sits with her socks on. 
carpet is a state. I'm building up. I need to fix that up like vax washer. And then wait for the weather to improve. So though it's quite nice out there, it's bloody cold and it won't dry. It's got to be able to dry. So it's basically just staying as it is. Or Charlie will get a bit older and we can rip it up and put it in the skip. But it does all right, doesn't it? Let's just take it into the hallway so we can see what its agitation is like. I presume there's enough cable. I plugged it in the wrong place, really. Yeah, we got enough for this. Obviously, this is the better carpet, even it's wearing a bit flat now. Absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with that. That's going to be right down the bottom of the refurb pile because he just doesn't need it really. I'll do it because then I can say I've done it. And I can clean it a little bit because it is a bit dirty in the extremities but my god it doesn't need anywhere near the amount of work I've done to some. But I can't put me, one, me, me junior of this version back together because I have only just put it in a box and be a bit fragile. It needs repair. So... I might try and get, I'll take, I took a picture of the junior before I boxed it up. So I'll try and take a picture of this in exactly the same place. But look at it. Isn't she a beauty? I'm very pleased to have her. Thank you for getting it for me, Tayab. And I hope you enjoyed your time with it. Get your way through all those rubbish Dysons into a proper vacuum cleaner. There was another turbo power about 15 miles away from him, we undenied about it yesterday, but it would be driving through the centre of Birmingham and out the other way, and I, I just didn't quite fancy it. So hopefully you get that tab. Obviously I'm always here to take it off your hands when you're bored of it. But for now, thank you for watching my beige box. Saw a beige box yesterday actually, but it had a Volvo 740 badge on the back. And if anything, it was... Slightly more lovely than this, but obviously I can't fit a Volvo 740 up in my loft. It's up in Scotland Shire now. With the Scottish Volvo Massive. So, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.